In this video, we're going to build up the concept of a sampling distribution. And specifically, we're going to talk about the sampling distribution of the mean. This is going to help us to understand if we knew the truth for the entire population, how likely are certain things to show up when we collect a sample of data? Specifically, if we knew the true mean in the population, how likely are certain sample means to show up when we collect some data? Building this understanding is going to help us to do statistical inference, where we take our sample and try and make statements about the population. So first, let's build up these concepts here. So to do this, we're going to live in the pretend world for a little bit, and we're going to suppose that we know at the population level Systolic blood pressure has a distribution that's skewed to the right. We know the true means 125, the true standard deviation is 20, and we're going to reach into this population here. We're going to take a sample of 25 observations, and we're going to calculate a sample mean. Now, in reality, we're just going to take one sample of size 25 and get one sample mean. But we learn to think of this sample mean here as one of many we could have got. We could have ended up with a slightly different set of data, which would, give, which would have given us a different estimate. So this builds the idea of a sampling distribution. And the sampling distribution is the theoretical set of all possible Estimates or sample means we could get. Okay, again, in reality, we only end up with one, but we think of it as one of many we could have possibly got. Okay, so to build up this concept, we're going to imagine taking samples of size 25 over and over again from this population and looking at the distribution or the set of all the possible estimates we could have got. So we have this idea of the central limit theorem, which um, basically tells us if the individuals we take that we sample from the population are independent okay, and we take a either a large sample size or the distribution of the individuals is approximately normal then the sampling distribution okay this theoretical set of all the estimates we could have ended up with will be approximately normal okay. so we can think of when we collect our sample of 25 observations okay, we expect and expect in the statistical sense, we expect that our sample mean is going to be equal to the true mean of 125. But we know that it won't. So again, the statistical meaning of expect, on average, if we took repeated samples over and over, the mean of all the sample means would be 125. Similar to the idea of if you toss a coin 100 times, you expect to get 50 heads. Chances are you won't. So we expect our sample mean to be equal to the true mean. We know that it won't be. We might get something a little bit above or a little bit below. But if we took samples over and over again, and calculated sample means over and over again, and looked at the distribution, okay, our histogram of all these, it would be approximately bell-shaped, centered around the true mean. We can think of the standard deviation of all these possible sample means that we can get, we call that the standard deviation of x bar. Or often, once we move into dealing with only samples of data, we're going to call it the standard error of the mean. Standard deviation of the mean, standard error of the mean, exact same concept. Okay. Um, without any justification for the moment, this comes out to be the standard deviation of the individual observations divided by the square root of the sample size. So here, 20 over square root of 25, which equals 4. Okay, and again, later we can talk about mathematically how do we get ourselves there. But what this standard error tells us is that while we expect our sample mean to be equal to the true mean of 125, we know that it won't. It's going to vary a bit above or below. But this standard deviation of the mean gives us an idea of, on average, how far will our estimate move from the true value. So on average, our sample mean is going to move about 4 units from that true mean. Okay. We also know that it's going to be normally distributed or symmetrically distributed around the true mean. So again, to recap some of these ideas, we're going to reach into the population, we're going to select 25 individuals, and for them we're going to calculate a sample mean. Okay. We're only going to do this once, 
but we can think of it as one of many estimates we could have possibly got. Okay. We're going to expect our estimate to be equal to the true value. We know that it won't be. Right? It might vary a bit above or a bit below, but the sample mean varies according to a normal distribution. Meaning it's normally or symmetrically distributed around the true value. And again, the standard error gives us an idea of, on average, how far will our estimate move from the true value. Another way to think of this, right, the standard deviation of the mean, or what we're going to start to call the standard error. Let's write it down because this is important. This gives us an idea of, on average, how far will our estimate, right, the sample mean, move, okay, or deviate from the true value, mu. If we reverse the way we're thinking about it, we can think of it, this tells us on average how close will our estimate be to the true value. Okay, so again, well, right now we're in this pretend world, we can see getting this idea of a standard deviation of the mean or standard error is going to give us an idea on average Right. How far or how close is our estimate to the true mean? And we're going to use this when we start to move into statistical inference and having to take our sample and try and make statements about the population. Right. This is going to help us understand how far estimates tend to move from the true values or how close true values tend to be to the estimate. One final note before we stop here is just to take note of what happens to the standard deviation of the mean here, the standard error, as n, our sample size becomes larger and larger. Right? We can notice as our sample size becomes bigger and bigger, the standard deviation of the mean or the standard error is going to become smaller and smaller. And again, hopefully this makes intuitive sense. As we take more and more data, our estimates should be closer and closer to the true values. You can take a look at the um, web visualization that we um, linked to in the video description below to play around with this um, concept a bit more interactively. And in following videos, we're going to start to see how we can use okay, this idea of a sampling distribution to do statistical inference, namely to build a confidence interval or to start to build up hypothesis tests. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Share our videos. I love statistics. Statistics is hard to say, Poopali. No, it's not Poopali.